Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are starting a new chapter where we are going to be looking at another peripheral on the MSP430 called a timer. Now, these this peripheral is not just something on the MSP430. The, a timer is present in every MCU. It is a super powerful peripheral that you will use <clears throat> in almost every embedded computing application. So here is what a timer is. It's very simple. It is a binary counter that is clocked from a free running clock with a known frequency. Very simple. <laughs> but what's unique about this is that it is separate from the CPU. So if you think about the CPU, it's, it's over there doing its fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute. And you can certainly build a, a counting algorithm within the CPU, but it takes a lot of instructions. It takes opcodes and operands. <clears throat> and so you don't get a precise time as you progress through those states. And so what if you had your CPU doing tasks and then it's totally separate, you had a binary counter that was running. That binary counter would be in essence tracking time independent of CPU execution. And this is nice because what we could do is every once in a while, if we could look at the, the counter value, and if we knew the clock frequency that the counter was being clocked by, and we knew the number of counts that had elapsed, <clears throat> we could calculate the amount of time that's passed. And so we can do this pretty easily, actually. So if we know the frequency, the period of the clock frequency is simply 1 over f. And so that's T. So every clock that occurs, it, or ever a clock occurs every T seconds. Well, every time you take a counter, you clock it with the edge of a clock. That means that every period of the clock, the counter increments. And so you go, okay, well, I'm going to go from zero to one to two to three. But you know that every count has a value of, or a, a time has elapsed in the amount of one period, okay? So that's pretty easy, that's pretty awesome because if you just take the number of counts that have, that have occurred and you multiply it by the period, you can figure out the total amount of time. So for example, if you started at zero <clears throat> and you counted up, or well, let's do this one. If you st started at some number like two and then you went out and looked at the counter and it said, oh, I'm two, and then you went and did something else and you came back and it, came back and it was FFFE, you could just take the difference between those count values and say, I'm gonna multiply that by the period of the clock and that will tell me the real time that has elapsed. And what's cool about it is that since it's separate, you know that this counter is not getting interrupted by anybody, it's free running. You can also, if on a granular level, you could actually count how many times the counter has done what we call overflowed, which means if, if you had like a 16 bit counter, it's gonna start at 0000, and it's gonna go up to FFFF, and then it's gonna roll back over to 0000 and start counting again. So you could actually maybe have like a flag or something where every time it rolled from FFFF back to zero, it would alert you. And you could know that by the number of bits in the counter that the amount of time between the starting value and the overflow value was finite. And it's simply, you know, the number of counts, which is two to the N or two to the 16, multiplied by the period of the clock, and that will give you the amount of time of the counter overflow. So just, just by having a free running counter, you get a couple really powerful ways to measure time. Okay, let's, let's just do a couple examples. In this video, we're not gonna do a program, but we are going to just look at kind of the basic concepts. Okay, let's say we have a 16-bit timer, and this is nothing but a counter. And we're going to clock it with a clock frequency of one megahertz. And this is uh, an option you have on the MSP430 FR2355. And the question is, how much time would pass between 000 and ABCD? Okay. And so this is kind of the plot that you would see. If, I, if this little plot right here, let's have time on the X axis. And then on the Y axis, we'll put the actual count and what'll happen is that you basically get this straight line that goes up. <clears throat> and so what we wanna know is how much time elapses between zero and ABCD. And that will be this right here. Well, this calculation is nothing more than taking the period of the clock 
multiplied by the number of counts that have passed, which is A, B, C, D. Now we'll probably want to convert that to decimal to make it easier, but let's start with figuring out what the period of the clock is. So I take one over the, the period is equal to the frequency. Okay, or frequency is equal to one over the period. Okay, let's flip that around because we're solving for period. So basically the period of the clock is nothing more than one over one megahertz, which happens to be one microsecond. So every microsecond, the count value increments by one. Then all I need to do is multiply that by the count that I'm going to, which is ABCD. We flip that into decimal to make the multiplication easier. It happens to be 43,981. And then all we do is basically multiply that number by one microsecond. And we have found that 43.981 milliseconds have transpired between when the counter started at zero and got up to ABCD. So we calculated real time. Okay, this is awesome. Uh, let's take a look at overflow. We mentioned that overflow is a very common thing that happens in a counter, especially if you let it run indefinitely, it's gonna overflow continuously. And let's calculate that. So what if we had something that counted from 0000 up to FFFF and then overflowed, and we wanted to calculate how long that takes, okay? So this is called timer overflow. The number of counts that happens in between zero and the overflow is simply two to the N. N is the number of bits in the counter. In this example, you have 16 bits, okay? So instead of actually plugging in like a hard, a fixed number like we did in the last example, you actually plug in two to the N. <clears throat> so let's do an example. Let's say that, let's say that you had a timer and it was clocked off of something like 32 kilohertz. This is also an option on the MSP430, the MCU we have. And I wanna know, tell me how much time elapses on a timer overflow. How, how frequent is a timer overflow occurring, okay? And so all I need to do is I need to know the number of bits in the timer. And in this example, it's a 16 bit timer. So I simply find the period of the clock. Once again, it's one over the frequency, which is 32, one over 32K. That comes out to be 30.5 microseconds. So every 30.5 microseconds, the counter increments. Okay, that's great. And now all I do is multiply that by two to the N. Two to the N for a 16 bit counter is two to the 16. That is six, five, five, three, six. I go ahead and multiply that by the period of the clock and I get voila, two seconds. So in this example, if I had a 16 bit counter and I clocked it at 32 kilohertz, every two seconds, this thing would overflow. So two seconds, boom, two seconds, boom, two seconds, boom. That's good to know because maybe what I can do is have the timer system notify me, maybe even trigger an interrupt every time there's an overflow, okay? Very powerful. All right, what about the difference between two specific values? So this one's pretty self-explanatory. If we had a 16-bit counter clocked off one megahertz and we wanted to know how much time has passed between 2223 and 999A, we simply subtract these two values and multiply by the period of the clock. First, let's calculate the period of the clock. One over the frequency is the period. One over one megahertz is one microsecond. Then all I simply do is subtract the two numbers. Let's flip them over to decimal to make it a little bit easier. So 2223 hex is 8,739 and 999A hex is 39322. I simply subtract those two values it gives me 30,583. That's how many count values have transpired between the starting value and the second value. Then I just take that 30,583, multiply it by one microsecond, which is the period of the clock, boom, 30.583 milliseconds. That's how much time has passed between this value and that value. Very simple. Now here's something that is a little more, probably more common. What if there was an overflow? Okay, so now you're, you're not gonna just look at how much time passes between zero and some value. You're not looking at just one overflow. You're not looking at just the difference between two values within the same count range. You're talking about saying go, <clears throat> and you come back much later, and you say how much time has passed? And you've waited so long that multiple overflows have occurred. Well, that's okay. As long as we know how many overflows occurred and we know the starting value and the ending value, we can absolutely calculate that. 
So let's think about how we would do it. <clears throat> I would say I'm going to start here and end at this value. I'm starting at two hex and I'm ending at B E E F hex. <clears throat> and I'm going to have two overflows that occur. And guess what? The timer system might notify me every time an overflow happens and I just make a note of it. Well, if I look at this picture, it really kind of explains how you calculate this. I can think of this, the way my brain works is I look at this and I go, well, it's almost like if you started at zero, you went one overflow, two overflows, then you went up to beef, and then you had to take away that little value. So then you had to come back just a little bit. So that allows us to basically create an equation that says, you need to know, first and foremost, how many overflows occur. Okay, it's a number of overflows. And then what you're going to do is multiply that by two to the n, because each one of these is going to be the number of counts. Just because we had an overflow, that only gives us information if we can convert that to time. So each overflow gives is converted back to time by multiplying by two to the n. That gives us a number of counts. Then we multiply that by the clock period. But for right now, let's pull the clock period out front and say, okay, I've had at least the number of overflows times two to the n. In this example, it'd be two overflows. And then I'm going to add this value in here to take us from basically if I went zero to overflow, zero to overflow, and then I went up to that value. So that's where I add value to. And then I just need to come back a little bit and subtract off the starting value. So I go ahead and subtract that off, multiply the total number of counts that occurred by the clock period, and boom, I got my, I got it. <laughs> okay, once again, let's do that example. Clock frequency in this is 32K. We're gonna do one over 32K. The period happens to be 30 microseconds. And then we're going to, let's start by converting our decimal, or our hex values to decimal. So two hex is two decimal. Beef hex is 48,879 decimal. And now let's just plunk everything in, okay? It's a 16-bit counter, so we're gonna have Two overflows multiplied by two to the 16. That gives me the total number of counts in two overflows. I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the value number two, which is you know beef, which was 48,879. That gets me all the way from zero, two overflows, and then my last value. And then we gotta subtract off the starting value, so the minus two. That is the whole number of counts that happened in this situation. Multiply that by the period of the clock, which is 30 microseconds. And voila, you got 5.491 seconds. So just by knowing the starting value, ending value, and how many overflows occurred, I can now track time across a long, long stretch of time, as long as I track the number of overflows. Okay, so this is pretty powerful. That is all a timer is. It's simply a binary counter, and we calculate how much time has passed if we know the number of counts that have transpired and the clock frequency, we multiply them together and we have the real time that is occurring separate from the CPU. All right, that's it. Uh, as always, remember, support my channel by subscribing, and see ya.